different places and sentences than we do. Uh, but then it was on a wide format, and that's why we ha I've had this for a few weeks, but I had to go through, and, and I, that was my fault on the one to cut off. Um, had to go through and change it to our... When we bought our, when we first bought our camera and this, they didn't have wide format on PowerPoint. So we've got a square 86 inch screen, so had to go through and that's why I didn't squeeze that one in enough. But you get the message and that's, that, that's a, a good PowerPoint show of this mission that we're supporting down there. So there's another place that we're sending money so that they can serve the Lord and win people to the Lord. So pray for them if you will. Uh, and I thought that was in Hermosa, but I don't know if that was just the name. Uh, but that's where we stayed, hand out tracks, and did all kinds of things when I went down there. So pray for these people, if you will. All right. Growing spiritually, we are today on a message of continued gratitude. Now, this could have been a Thanksgiving message, but this is the ones in the list. We're talking about this thing of growing spiritually. Um, uh, 1 Thessalonians 5.18, if Carrie read our verse in a minute. So if you, you know, if you look closely at uh, this verse as we look at it, you're going to notice that there's an admonition. First, we are to give thanks. Second, we are that, second, that, we, are, that we are to give, um, as we found out, thanks in not only just thanks, but we're to give thanks in everything. And in the front of the bulletin, as you saw, the joy of the Lord is my strength. That's what we ought to have as Christians is that joy because it's the Lord who changed us. When we sing, let your voices sing out with joy. God wants us to sing to Him. Uh, when we give, let it be with joy. When we serve, let it be with joy. Uh, the Bible says God loves a cheerful giver, not one who wants to take it back. Are not ones that put an offering in the offering and in, in the plate and says, "Oh, I wish I had this." I guarantee you, if you tithe, God will bless you abundantly. But he's, we're supposed to do it joy. So read our verse, Gary, First Thessalonians five eighteen. In everything, you give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. So first of all, as you see on your slide here, we are to give thanks, and it says in everything. Uh, the meaning of giving thanks, first of all, the word for give thanks simply means to be grateful. Um, I think as we grow up, we're not grateful for the blessings we have. Mom spends two hours fixing dinner, and we eat it and get up away from the table and say, well, that was good. Um, now, in Germany, they say that when you enjoy a meal... If you want to say thank you to the host, you do this thing called brrrr. And they say that is a thank you to the host saying your food was good. In other places, you show thanks to the host by asking for seconds. How many of you ask for seconds when your mom fixed liver? <laughs> when I was a kid, I, we had liver a lot. Why? Anybody know why? It was cheap. Beef, liver, and onions. I got to be in high school and older, and I, I wouldn't eat liver when mom fixed it. And when I got in high school, I'd come in from school. And back then, my mom, we had lived a few blocks from a McDonald's, and back then, my mom would hand me $2 or a dollar, and she'd say, here's your dinner money. Because she knew I would not eat liver. Now I like liver. Chicken liver, beef liver, I like it. Now, we've been married 46 years. Guess how many times my wife has bought liver? That goose egg. She doesn't like liver. She will not buy it. I like it now. Go to Golden Corral. A lot of times I will get chicken livers to put those. I put, I, Joyce can tell you, I put a bunch of onions and peppers on it. Gravy. I like chicken livers now. But I wasn't grateful for liver when I grew up. I was grateful many times for what we had. We were so poor we couldn't even pay attention. Uh, there were times I had to eat cereal with water because we didn't have milk. How many remember the cans of Mill Not Milk? Remember they like sweetened condensed milk? Sometimes that was the only milk we had because those were probably a quarter or 20 cents, I don't know. And then my mom took those and watered them down. You take a can of Mill Not Milk and one or two cans of water, and that was the only milk, that, and that didn't taste good on cereal. 
but we were grateful that we had what we had. Matter of fact, that's all we knew we had because that's what everybody had. But were we as grateful as we should be? Gratefulness, giving thanks, um, consider, consider a few of the good gifts that he's talking about. One of the greatest uh, for which we should be thankful for is our eternal life. Now, we are glad that we don't have to stay on this earth forever. This earth is not a good place to be um, for because of sin. We should be thankful for the indwelling of the Holy Spirit. We don't have to stay here forever, though. Who's in charge of all things? We don't like this these things. My brother, of course, he lives in Florida. I talked to him on Friday. And he said there's another hurricane on the tail heading that way. I had looked at the weather out there in the ocean, but they're in the area where they get a lot of those down there. He said there's another one heading our way. Um, we don't like that. We don't like the part that part of that. Uh, but the Holy Spirit, Romans chapter 8, verse, the last part of verse 9 says, Now if any man be have not the Holy Spirit, he is none of his. We talked about this on Wednesday night. We were talking about the tribulation. When Jesus comes, and he could come today, he could come, we could go through the roof. We talked about that last week. When the rapture happens, we said the word rapture is not in the Bible, but when the rapture happens, we're going to leave. There are people going to be saved during the first part of the tribulation. However, the Holy Spirit will not be here. Now, the Holy Spirit, we say, well, I have this gut feeling. Somebody said, it's not a gut feeling, it's the Holy Spirit teaching me. Do you believe that? What if we didn't have the Holy Spirit? What if we didn't have His comfort? What if we didn't have his joy? So, of course, there are the gifts of service that we won't go through all of those in the church, but then there are the physical blessings. And these are the things we have to have gratitude for. For We can get out of every... Uh, we can get up every morning and we say we can say, Thank you, Lord. Uh, we have clean air to breathe. We have, I don't know of anybody here who doesn't have food in your home, something you can eat. You may, you may have something you don't like. Of course, you know we volunteer at the pantry in Ellisville, and there are people who come through, and the food that they get, Diana can tell you, Joyce can tell you, sometimes they get about, a, when, when we have a guy named Paul, he loves to help people outside, he's a former Marine, um, he himself has had a couple strokes, but he's a former Marine, we've got a shopping cart, and people will leave with about a half, two-thirds full of food, a shopping cart. But there are people who came in and have come in the last few weeks and they said, this is the only food I have. I have nothing else. Now, I don't know if any of us are like that. That we have nothing at all. We, Like I said, you may have something in your cupboards you don't like. You may not want to eat it sometimes, but we ought to be thankful for what we have. God has blessed us with families, with friends, um, and our jobs. Um, we have a wonderful country. Now, is this country perfect? Is any country perfect? Is any government perfect? It won't be when man's running it. You're going to have somebody inside, on top, in places. They're going to make rules and want things done their way, and they're not perfect. Now, boy, it would be nice if we lived in a perfect country, but one of these days, one of these days, we're going to go to a country that is perfect. There's going to be sunshine all the time, and I'm not just talking about the sun, because it's not going to need the sun or the moon to light up heaven. There's going to be sunshine, S-O-N-S-H-I-N-E. 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. Matter of fact, let's just skip that phrase, because there isn't going to be a day, there isn't going to be a week, there won't be a calendar. Most of you have this thing called a calendar, you used to have these paper calendars, pocket calendars. You, my wife still keeps one because she writes down all the stuff, you know, the first time we went on a date and the first time we kissed and everybody, she's got everybody's birthdays in there and all this other stuff. She still keeps the paper one, but many of you keep things. I, I keep things on my phone. I keep reminders on my phone because if I don't put a reminder on my phone that I have a doctor's appointment six weeks from now or four weeks from now or two days, if I don't put it on my phone, guess what I'm going to do? The next day after the time was supposed to happen, I'll remember it. Uh, but we won't have to worry about any of that in heaven. 
we won't have to worry about those blessings. All we're going to have to know is that Jesus is there. So, we have a beautiful country to live in. God has blessed us with families, with friends. Now, look at this next thing. How are we to give thanks? Look at this next slide. Gratitude is to be expressed in our relationship with one another. Like I said last week, you're a blessing when you come in to this place and other people see you. Uh, it was good to see Pat this morning. Hadn't been here a while. Like I said, she's taking two trips. She said it's good to get home, but not good to get home. You know, um, pray for her sister. Sickness, we don't like. But when you come into this place and you're able to come into this place and somebody else sees you come in, they say, hi, uh, good to see you. Uh, you talk to each other. It, you're a blessing to somebody else. Every one of you are a blessing to the pastor. You're a blessing to someone else because they see that they're not the only ones here. Robert came in and I was behind Diana and he handed me some Arby's coupons. By the matter of fact, they're right here. Like I said, if you guys have any of those, we'll take them. Uh, and she, he didn't say anything, so Diana was turning the other way. And then she turned and said, oh, you're here. Her brother's right there. And she didn't even notice. That's how important you are, Robert. She didn't even know you were here. Now, if he would have said something, Diana, would you recognize his voice? <laughs> she would have she would have known he was here, but he didn't know. He handed me the coupons and and then and she didn't know. Oh, oh, you did make it. Um, you're a blessing by being here because other people get a joy. We should get a joy out of seeing each other. Gratitude. Uh, this is to be evident in how um, we pray. The Bible says to pray one for another. Now we have a prayer chain on the phones. Many of you have your numbers on there. If you haven't done that, give it to Donna and she will add that. To, have, have you figured out the way to add somebody? At first, we couldn't add somebody. So, uh, we're, and we use that too. If there's an announcement or something, we can send it out. I've done it a couple times. But we've got a prayer chain. Somebody has something urgent. Somebody has something they need. Somebody's sick. Somebody's in the hospital. Whatever it is, we can put that. They can contact me, contact Donna. We put it on our prayer chain, and then we start getting these responses. I'm praying, I'm praying, I'm praying hands, or we're praying. And, and it's a blessing to others to know that others are praying for them. And we don't know these prayer, the, our prayer group goes to several people, and then there's some other people who have prayer chains, and they send it to others, and then you don't know how many are on there, so... You know, we don't know how far around the globe, and I'm serious, in just a couple minutes we can have a prayer, prayer request traveling all around the world. And it doesn't matter how many people you're praying for. It doesn't matter how many people are praying for you. The joy is to pray one for another. And to know that somebody's praying for you. Connie sends out cards, said we're praying for you, glad to see you, you know, whatever, glad you were here, happy birthday, whatever it is. Just to know that somebody cares about you. So instead of only coming, you know, only coming to God to ask for things, we ought to remember with gratitude to give thanks for all those around us. So secondly, we are to give thanks in everything. I capitalized the word in. We're to give thanks in everything. I have a question. You know what it's going to be. Are we to be thankful for the bad stuff? Is God in charge of everything? Amen. Does He allow things to happen in our lives that we don't like? Does He? If He's in charge of everything, we have to acknowledge that He, His providence, allows us to experience things that we don't like. Now, I believe, not always, every time, I don't believe it's every time, but I believe Many times God lets something happen to us that's negative, bad, downer, whatever you want to call it. Because in a week, in a month, in six weeks, something's going to happen to somebody you know. And you're going to look at them and you're going to say, here's what the Lord did for me when it happened to me. And that is such a blessing. Because then, here we go, one another, somebody else can figure out and say, okay, if they got through it, I can get through it too. I can go through the same situation, and if God helped them, surely He will help me. So, consider this little word, in. It makes a lot of difference uh, where we look at what, we, what the Lord is commanding us to do in this verse. 
God is not instructing us to give thanks for everything in the world. The Word is full of wickedness. The whole world is full of wickedness. So what's the difference? God doesn't want to give us thanks for everything. We don't want, he doesn't want to be thankful for the wickedness. He wants, to real, he wants us to realize that the things we do have, the blessings we have, are from Him, and we ought to give thanks for those things. How often? Continually. What does the Bible say? Pray without what? Pray without ceasing. You can talk to the Lord. I, it, you can be in the shower. You can be laying in your bed. You can be driving to work. Now, it's advised when you're driving to work, don't close your eyes and pray when you're talking to the Lord. We have enough crazy drivers around this town, around this area. Uh, we were somewhere yesterday, somebody came. We were going one way, and they came to a white car. I forget, like a little Mustang or something, came to the corner. Didn't even stop, didn't even slow down, just went right around the corner. Just didn't matter whether that stop sign, you know, the eight-sided thing that says it's red, and, and it says stop, or in Mexico it says alto. You know, what? it doesn't matter what it is. It, it says stop. People don't know what that means. In the summer or the spring, sometimes I'll have my window open here in the office. You can hear trucks go down through here, and you can tell they don't even slow down. You can hear the noise. There's no way they can slow down. They just go around the corner out there. Uh, but we have to sometimes, we're supposed to obey the rules. But don't close your eyes when you're talking to the Lord. But we can do it any time. So whatever we are going through, at any time in life, we should give thanks to God. All right, here's the hard part. Lord, I'm sick. Thank you. Do we ever do that? We should. If he is allowing, if we believe he's in charge, and you just said we believe that, if he's in charge of everything, the good and the bad, he's still in control. We talked last week. Or the other night somebody said, you know, no matter what happens with the election, with this election, God is still in control. We can, we can in everything give thanks because we rejoice in as the verse says, we, re we are to rejoice evermore. Rejoice. We are to be happy in the Lord. We're going to have things happen. Every one of us are going to have things happen we don't like. We don't like having accidents. We don't like getting sick. We don't like our hair falling out. We don't like our ears, our ears failing. Um, like I said the other day, that... that thing I saw on Facebook said, I haven't had chocolate in so long, I lost the hearing in my right eye. <laughs> That's when you're addicted to chocolate. Now I am, I like that with dark chocolate. I love dark chocolate. I'm going to have to worry about my wife eating my dark chocolate because she doesn't like it. Now Ryan, he likes it. Randy and Becky like milk chocolate. Me and Ryan like dark chocolate. Even that stuff that's 90%, it's, it's got bitter, it's bitter, but it's good. But we are grateful because we receive and we rejoice because we pray. And because we pray, we are grateful. We ought to be grateful for the ability to pray and talk to the Lord. He cares about us more than we'll ever know, just like a, a, a parent. A parent gives a child a spanking and says, this is going to hurt you more than me. And the kid says, oh yeah? How is it going to hurt you more than me? you got a paddle in your hand. You say, this is going to hurt you. Emotionally, it hurts the parents. God sometimes has to whoop us, and it's got to hurt him. But it has to be done. And not, that's, I'm not saying that the things that happen, the negative things happen because God's whooping. Some of those God allows, so keep that separate. But we should be grateful for all things. Yeah, like I said, said it many times, have an accident and jump out. The people are going to think you're crazy. You jump out and say, praise the Lord. Oh, we don't do that. But we ought to be thankful for everything good or bad because God has a reason. What does he want to teach us? Are we willing to be taught? And he's going to treat every one of us different. He's going to do different things to each one of us. It won't be the same. 
So look at this next thing. We are to give thanks. It's God's will. Now, why should we give thanks? Because He commands us to do it. He is, he, he is sovereign. And He's holy. Does God know all things? I've asked this before. How many of you know some human being that think they know everything? Anybody raise your hand? You know somebody that thinks you can't tell me they think they know everything. They're never with you know, you know, no matter what you say, I already know that. Or they argue about it or whatever because they think they know everything. Nobody knows everything. You, you, it's impossible. Um, my mom, that was one thing we hated about mom. No matter what you'd say, in many things, she she Work for the state just for a short time in Missouri, but if you, especially with, and, and in Florida, she worked for the county in Head Start. But no matter what you'd say, she'd say, I, won't, I know what every law is for Head Start for every state in the country. We knew my mom, we knew that wasn't true. There's no way, she, but she had herself convinced that she knew every law for every state, all the Head Start laws, children's laws for every state. Now, my mom turned people in who did things that she said was wrong, and we said, you spanked us with Hot Wheel tracks, and you turned somebody else in for that. That's abuse. She said, yeah, but that was different. She probably said in her mind you needed it. Those paddles, the paddle balls, those little paddles now are so thin you can just take them and snap them. When we were kids, they weren't thin. They were made out of two-by-fours, I think. They weren't that thick, but they 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 work. And even but then, Mom always told us, "I'm gonna take my shoe off and whoop you." Even a couple of days before she died, we were in there that we were down there. She said, "I'm gonna take my shoe off and whoop you." I said, "You know, me and my brother are kidding. You can't catch us." She said, "You better ought to be glad." But she always, for years, grandkids, great grandkids, us, my kids, me, my brother, I'm gonna take my shoe off and whoop you. <coughs> She couldn't catch us then. But God has to do that once in a while. So, we got to give thanks. We're to give thanks is God's will. Now, what is the most important thing we should follow in all things? Because we owe everything to Him. And I should have made that slide and should have made that word everything. We owe everything to Him. You've seen those cards New IRS laws, three by five card, fill out your taxes. How much did you make? Send it all. How much did you make? Send it all. You know, happiness, joy, gratitude. If you won a million dollars in a lottery, would you be happy? Probably. Would it provide everything for you? Probably not. Would you probably spend? What would you do when it's gone? I work with a guy. Mike knows him. Him and his dad were both negative. His dad would say, any luck? All bad? Number one, I don't believe in luck. I believe in the providence of God. I don't believe in karma. I believe it's God's will. He allows things to happen. It's not karma. Uh, but Scott said he would never want to win the lottery because he would have to pay taxes on it. Now, if somebody gave me $100 million and said you got to pay for whatever the tax is on 40, 50, 60, I don't know what this is, probably different in every state. Let's say 50% because of the even number we can split it in half. If I had $100 million that said you got to pay $50 million, half of its taxes, I'd say have at it. I could do a lot with $50 million. I could buy three or four steak dinners. <laughs> like the sign said, I'm getting so strong I can carry $100 worth of groceries in one hand. Two gallons of milk and a loaf of bread just about anymore. They say we're paying $450 more for stuff for everything this year than last year. All your bills, if you buy food, if you have a family, you're paying $450 more per month than you were a year ago. Wow. So we're to give thanks because it's God's will. Because we owe everything to Him. Look at this next slide. Because without Christ, we would be without hope in this present world. I mean, think about it. 
I do not understand how, and I'm serious, we've talked about this many times, someone can survive in this world the way it is now without the Lord. You know, times seem difficult enough for us as Christians. Things aren't perfect. We don't live in a perfect world. We don't have a perfect world. We never will till Jesus comes back and one of these days he's going to split the eastern sky. But the world has no hope. They don't have any hope. I've done funerals of Christians and non-Christians. And I can look at the faces of people and see the difference and talk to people who are non-Christians and Christians. Now, even if you're a Christian, you don't want to lose your loved one. Am I right? Of course. When we know they're Christians, we know we're going to get to see them again. It's hard enough, and we don't, we don't want to lose them, but we can be glad that God allows us to know that they are saved. But I have done the funerals of people who are not saved. And I've talked to families. And the demeanor and their attitude is totally different than those of Christians. It's totally different. I told you I wanted the back of my casket. If I died, I told my wife I wanted, I wanted to stay in the back of the casket. I'm out of here. I'm out of here. I, when I die, my soul's going to leave. To be absent from the body is to be what? Present with the Lord. I'm not saying I want to die today, so I'll stay. I'll, I'll make sure I won't make my wife mad. Uh, I'm, I'm not sure. What, I don't say I want to die today, but when I do go. If the Lord tarries and doesn't come back for us in rapture, when I do go, I'm going to go with the Lord. This body is just going to be a shell. Don't weep. Be glad that you know somebody who went to heaven. I'm not going to be a rose in heaven, but I get to go to heaven by the grace of God. Um, so, why don't we give, have so much gratitude? An unthankful person may not be saved. And you've seen a lot of people... 2 Timothy 3, 2. For men shall be lovers of their own selves. Covetous. Boasters. Proud. We've talked about that word proud. Blasphemers. Disobedient to parents. And unthankful. And they're unholy. There's the whole key. The opposite side of being thankful and have gratitude. The world can't have what we have. It's impossible, I believe. Because we have the love of God in our hearts. When he came in, when Jesus came in, did he change you? Did your outlook on everything change? It should have. You should have had a different outlook. You should have had a different different attitude. Everything should change. An unthankful person may simply be ignorant of the Word of God. An unthankful person may be filled with pride and self-control. An unthankful person may be angry or disappointed with God or with their own lives. You know, the 80% of the 80, they say 80 to 85% of people in the United States don't like their jobs. They don't like what they're doing. Or they may be living, but they don't like what they're doing. How many people are you see begging for money and right behind them the store that's hiring? I don't get it. Is it? I don't get it. Go in there and apply for a job. I've had more than one person tell me they've stopped the person standing on the corner saying, I need money, I'll work. If you come on my lawn, I'll, 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 I'll pay you. No, I don't do that kind of work. If I was hungry, I'd go mow the lawn. At the pantry, they have to come in and they stand in line. Right now, the weather's not bad, and they've just put some new benches outside towards urban air, and people are able to sit down. Uh, but we had to put signs out, and even last week, on Tuesday, the, the handicapped and the elderly come in at 1.30 instead of 3, and there was people out there at noon. Little afternoon, there's one little lady, Eula. Uh, I love her, and she, she always she comes in. She's a little short lady. Um, but she was one of the second people in line. Now, I don't know what you think Yule is, 80, 85 years old? I don't, I don't know. At least. But her husband, since she's got a wonderful husband, but they need food, and she's there every hour and a half ahead of time just to get some food. 
was eating at Longhorn last weekend. Well, you don't have to be poor to come into the pantry. If you have a million dollars, you can come in and shop. There's no restrictions on that. I've only got a half a million, so uh, but there's no restrictions. I didn't know, but they can come in to get food. So there are multitudes of reasons why people may be unthankful. But regardless of the reason, it is still in opposition to God's plan for us. We said we, we should be grateful because God's told us to. It's His will. We ought to be joyful. Yes, things happen. We don't like the negative things. We were all hyped up about going up to the Rhine, up the Rhine, and they said, we don't, I'm not ready for you. My wife had the whole back of the car packed. we got to unpack the car now. we got to take everything out, put it back in the house. No big deal, but we had everything ready. We were all ready to go, to go up there and help them. Um, First Thessalonians 5.18, once again, in everything give thanks. For this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning the last word of that verse. It says concerning you. It's the will of God for you. That means everyone. God has a plan. We're talking about growing spiritually. I said it's the end of the growing season, but Growing spiritually never stops. I hope you learned something from your Sunday school lesson today. If you read it, if you didn't know we were in Daniel, if you didn't know what everything was about, you'd read those verses and say, what in the world are you talking about? Am I right, Dave? You'd read those and say, what is going on? How does that tie in with the Bible? But I've been studying today and I had classes in college. Dave loves the prophecy. If you listen, it'll make sense. Then you can say, well, I can give thanks in that. Because what we're talking about today in Sunday school is like everything else as it closed. The Lord's coming back soon, I believe. One, amen. How many of you are going to stay here with the Lord? The Lord's coming back soon. Amen. Okay, we've got five. I don't know one of these days, the Lord's going to come back and we get to go to heaven. Father, I want to thank you. Your blessings are abundant. The joy of the Lord is my strength. We sing because we're happy. We have gratitude in our hearts because you've saved us. We're not like the unsaved person who can't have gratitude, don't realize what they have. You tell us to sing to you, to give to you, to pray to you, to follow you, to trust you, to obey your will, and have gratitude doing it. So bless us, Lord. Teach us each week. Teach us each day. Teach us each minute. We need you. We cannot be without you. We cannot survive without you. So may your blessings be abundant in our lives. Father, thank you for saving us. Maybe you're watching by video and you don't know the Lord Jesus Christ as your own Savior, go to Him say, Lord Jesus, come into my heart and save me. Father, we want to thank You for Your love. Thank You for Your grace. Bless us, Lord, and all God's people say. Amen. Say for Sunday school, I guarantee you will enjoy the lesson.